Time's a charm. Think, Rain, think! I was able to reunite with the others, but Elise and Princess Alvin are still in the Alliance's custody. You have to find What's your path, the best thing boy. I can do? This isn't just about me. What do all of us want to do? <laughs> Keep racking your brain like that and smoke will start coming out of your ears. Hey, Crow. Nice of you to bring me a goodie basket. <laughs> what do you want? Hey, now. No need to give me that look. I figured I was going to find you busy thinking everything over like your life depended on it. And what do you know? I was right. How about you mind your own damn business? Don't you have better things to do with your time? I figured the huh. glorious Azure Chevalier would be far too busy with the war to be hanging out around here. <laughs> it's tough being popular. Yeah, that it if is. If you joined us, I could get away with doing half the work I am now. So come on, <laughs> stop freaking out about it so much and make a choice. Then again, you are a slacker here. This isn't something I can just decide by flipping a coin, Crow! And besides, it'd probably be an easier choice if not for a certain someone... What's that in your hand, anyway? Grub, of course. Kinda huh. early, but I brought you your lunch. Mind if I join you? Hamburgers, fries, and onion rings, huh? <laughs> you know, I just had a good burger and some fries. I was expecting something more fancy, like I had last night. Also, as of now, this dream has officially lasted longer than the previous one. Oh, that kind of food more your thing? Okay then, give me a minute while I go ask the chef to whip something up. No, this is fine. The burger looks delicious. Cool. Alright, dig in. <laughs> this tastes kind of different from a normal burger. Oh, no wonder. It's got whitefish in it. Yeah, they're called huh. fish burgers. Pretty good, right? Yeah. The tartar sauce makes for an unusual extra flavoring, too. I've never had my burgers like that. Hmm. This tastes amazing. I like this way more than the food I had last night, to be honest. Well, yeah. glad to hear. Guess it was worth putting my cooking skills to the test after all. Huh. Wait, you made this? Was my first time cooking in a while, too. Sharon could probably do better, though. I won't disagree but with that. But I wanted that. to give it a shot anyway. This stuff was like soul food back in Dry, where I grew up. Oh. Oh, yes. You grew up there. All the time we spent crow arm breath. <laughs> so oh, you're from the SEZ, yeah. right? Vita was using some weird thing of hers to let you see what was going on, wasn't she? So I guess mm -hmm. you saw what happened there. Yeah. Jirai was that special economic zone in the northwest you guys went to during our August field study, too. We didn't run into anything like that in the Jirai special economic zone. Though, I guess that makes uh, yeah. sense seeing as it's under the direct control of the Imperial of government that. and not a noble. I seem to recall that it was annexed eight years ago, is that right? Who? Still a pretty lively place, So you ended he up said. going back to your old hometown then? Yeah, by pure coincidence. It's changed a lot since I was last there, so it was kind of surreal being back again. But it was nostalgic yeah, that would in its be own surreal. way, too. It's been bugging me for a long time now. What could have made you want to join a group of terrorists like the Imperial Liberation Front? What was it that made you hate Chancellor Osborne that much? Enough to take his life? <sighs> Tell me, Crow, please. I want to know what it was that made you who you are now. <laughs> what kind of place Jirai was, how you lived there, and what you were doing before you entered the Academy and met Toa, Angelica, and George. <laughs> Where's the fun in prying into a guy's past? Save all that I mean, talk for your number one in class. Fun. Who's the lucky girl anyway? Elisa, Laura, Emma, Fee? And don't tell me it's um, Millium, because, you know, it... I'm serious, Crow. <laughs> I really want to know. Think of telling me your past as paying off the interest you owe on that 50 Mira. Because until I know, until we know, we won't be able to move forward. Yep. You're really serious. Yeah, this'll... this'll... Uh, yeah, this'll pay off your... 
Yeah, this is a good way to pay off your loan to the Bank of Reed, you know? Crawl? My past really isn't that big of a deal, you know. It's got nothing on yours, that's for sure. If you find yourself thinking that's all when I'm done, well, I warned you. So, very you well then. Know. Yeah, nothing you say will change my but mind. But you better not disappoint Please, me. Please, tell me. <sighs> all right, you win. Like I said, it's just your run-of-the-mill sob story. Pick up any history textbook and you'll probably find a dozen others just like it. It's yeah. the kind of story that's so common no one bothers to remember it, like it never even happened. Huh. Back in those days, well, Dry was known it. as Dry City. It was a city-state off the coast of northwest Zemuria that prospered through maritime trade with West Erebonia, North Ambria, and Remiferia. Yeah. It had a population of around 150,000 people, so it wasn't exactly a big place or anything. Yeah, especially not compared to its fellow city state. Because of that, the surrounding nations left it alone and let us live out our days in peace. We were pretty fortunate, all things considered. Until about 20 years ago. Yeah. That was when the North Ambrian disaster struck, and much of the principality of North Ambria was turned to salt. Oh yes, that was that result, happened. Trade on the northwest shore was reduced to virtually nothing. Day after day, Jirai's prosperity started to fade away. Well, I mean, when you, yeah, I imagine you'd be feeling a bit salty about losing your best source of income. Still, it wasn't all bad. We had our fishing, our historic landmarks, our septium mines. We could make use of those to get trade going again, both to keep our state running and to help out North Ambria. In fact, the one who advocated that approach was the mayor, my grandfather. Excellent. I, I know a fellow who is also has a grandfather for a mayor. Or had he a grandfather for a mayor. He was the last mayor Jirai City ever had. <laughs> he was a stubborn old bastard, but he had this wry sense of humor and was well loved by everyone. Wait, hold on. So that was 20 years ago. Oh, so Crow was faking being a teenager the whole time. And I lost so... my mom and dad early, so he was also my only living relative. I have to wonder what skincare he uses. <laughs> he taught me just about everything a guy could know. He was like a mom, dad, and your old master rolled into one, I guess. Anyway, fast forward to ten years ago. Out of nowhere, we received this proposal from the Erebonian government. They said they wanted to extend a railway line from Heimdall all the way to Dry. We relied on the sea for trade yeah. before, but there wasn't any reason to believe we that couldn't sounds benefit like from a being big connected to Heimdall news. by rail. The proposal drew overwhelming support from the city's council, and as a result, my grandfather was forced to accept. Within a year, the city had all of its old life back and then some. The streets were more bustling than ever. But keep in mind, yeah, but this was a result of huge wrong. amounts of imperial capital flowing into the city. Land and buildings we once treasured were bought up left and right. Everything became a target for investment. People only cared about making money. Something Sheesh. similar supposedly happened in Crossbell, too, but unlike there, no opposition existed in Jirai. <sighs> My grandfather sensed something was off, and he tried what he could to get the situation under control. Then one day, someone blew up the railway line leading to Jirai. Everyone demanded There's that it be repaired disaster. as quickly as possible. Everyone except the Imperial government. Yeah, that seems like a pretty obviously bad Instead, move on their part. Instead, they panned our national security arrangements for being insufficient and threatened to withdraw all Imperial capital. Yeah, that's a real dick move. The city was left in an uproar like we'd never Good seen. Good job, Osborne. Shares plummeted. And with no one able to ascertain the culprit's identity, chaos reigned. That was when he showed up. Chancellor Gilliath Osborne, in his third year as representative of the Imperial government, personally came to Jirai. We then received a second proposal. The restoration of the railway and its future security will be seen to by the Imperial Army. In return for our continued assistance and safekeeping, Jirai will come under the wing of our glorious empire. It all sounds good on face value. And greater prosperity as a special economic zone. The timing was too good to be true, really. Realizing yeah, this, say. my grandfather staunchly opposed the idea. He tried everything he could to convince the city's council to reject the offer. 
Unfortunately, once you taste the sweet fruit of prosperity, it's hard to want to go back. Yeah. The council, made up of influential merchants and all their greed, jumped at the offer. And tempted by the elimination of customs, together with the tax breaks from being an SEZ, many of the citizens did too. And during all that, they'd conveniently found a suspect behind the railway incident, my grandfather. Huh. He loved Jirai more than anyone, and up till then, its people loved him too. And yet, virtually overnight, he found himself facing the wrath of both the city's council and the citizens alike. Left with no choice, he resigned from his position as mayor, and Jirai formally became part of the Empire. Both of these things happened on the same exact day. Sheesh. That was a really rough day in the history of Jirai. That was eight years ago. Naturally, everyone knew my grandfather wasn't the one who did it. They knew who was really responsible. They just turned a blind eye to the truth. See? I warned you. Just your run-of-the-mill sob story. So, does that mean you're actually in your 20s or something since you said 20 years ago and showed a picture of you? Ooh, 20 years ago. I don't know what to say, Crow. Ugh. What happened to him after that? Your grandfather. One day, he just up and died. Yeah. Ugh. Once he resigned, the whole affair with the railway getting blown up was all but forgotten. He lived comfortably in retirement for about half a year, fell ill, and that was that. He just... Mm. lost the will to go on, I guess. Like I said, he was the only family I had. I mean, I had plenty of friends even then, but I chose to leave it all behind. I was 13 at the time. So, yeah, that means you're 20... Two? I wandered 23? the land, doing whatever I had to to get by. That was when I met old Kayan, who happily indulged my hatred for the Chancellor. And with his financial <laughs> backing, I went out with the goal to find others who were just like me. That was the beginning of the Imperial Liberation Front. Gideon, Scarlet, and Vulcan were among those I recruited. Yep. I had also met Vita then. I only knew her as the woman who had often come to see Kayan. She guided me to a place below the city of Ortis, and there slept the Azure Knight Ordeen. One after another, I overcame the same trials you did with your friends, but alone. And once I'd proven myself worthy, Ordeen accepted me as his Awakener. That was three years ago. I was 16. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, I was a bit confused. You're very inconsistent about your age. So you're saying you're 19 right now. My preparation's complete. I concealed my background. However, or you said that when your grandfather died, you were... I, I'm a bit confused right now. Oh, it showed you 20 years ago. You, you claim that you were... You, are, you claim to be 19 years old. old. But the flashback showed you 20 years ago. Oh, you supposedly left after your grandfather died 9 years ago. And you were 13 at the time. And enrolled in a military academy. So how old time. are you, Crow? Everything I did, I did for the sole purpose of taking the Chancellor's head. Come on now, what's with the face? You look sadder about all this than I do. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I swear. I'm not trying to tell you the Chancellor was evil or anything. What? <laughs> Still, there's no denying that he managed to outwit my grandfather. Yeah. And he may have lost, but Pops always loved a good gamble. It's thanks to him that I'm pretty good at chess, card games, that kind of stuff. I'd say it's fairly normal for a student to want to avenge his master's defeat, wouldn't you? Maybe. Yeah. At the end of the day, there's no denying this country has problems, and the Chancellor's methods were making them worse. Also, the... Also, the Salt Pale incident was closer to 30 years ago than 20 years ago. I studied those problems, worked out how to use the situation to my advantage, and then won the game with an all-or-nothing gamble. But when you think of how peaceful Jirai is now, I'd say I've got a duty to clear up the mess left behind by my game too, which means ending this war and restoring peace. Very well, so you wish to end the war quickly. So it's only when that's done that my game is truly over. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't want whatever your decision is to be influenced by my past, okay? Like Rufus said, you need to think long and hard about what it is you're fighting for. You gotta finally find you, yourself, Reed. More than anyone else. Yeah, but Crow. Uh, anyway, I think I've stuck around here for long enough. I haven't even finished up the fries yet. You're gonna be treated as a visitor. Well, sort of. It's about time for the higher ups to head back to Heimdall, so go ahead and pass the time however you want. However I Very want. Well, then. What else can I even do here? Well, this is, huh, so you've already left on your phone. Yeah, don't you wink at me. There'll be no guards outside your room, so if you want to try and escape, be my guest. Just keep in mind okay, that some fine, members thanks. of Ouroboros and Zephyr are on board too. Not to mention me, Scarlet, and Vulcan. So if you're up for a gamble okay. of your own, get ready to take all of us on. Sounds fun. <laughs> Indeed, Reed. Oh yeah, one more thing. There's this real cute visitor in the guest of honor's room on the second floor. I think she'd perk right up if she saw you. So why not go pay her a visit? Just don't go making your girl jealous, okay? <laughs> when he says just don't I go making your girl meets. jealous, you ask which one. He said she's in the guest of honor's room. Well, I can't waste that much makes time no here. Sense. I told everyone I'd definitely come back soon. Right now, I need to gather as much information as I can. I can make my choice after that. Yep. At least then, it'll be an informed one. Alright then. First of all, let's check all around the walls. And where'd the food go? Huh. Hi, Albert. Looks like I don't have much of a choice. Huh. So, these are your civilian clothes, huh? <sighs> Having to travel to and from Crossbell like this is utterly exhausting. Understandable, no, truly. I mustn't complain. I'm doing this for the sake of my lord. Um, she sounds awfully familiar. Huh. Who goes there? Wait! You're the Ashen Knight's pilot! I remember you now. You're with Ouroboros. Duvali the Swift, right? That's her. Have you no shame? Is it perhaps normal for you to barge into a lady's room unannounced? You and that yep, Arsade so... are only as bad as each other, I swear! Learn your place! Actually, I just walked through the door normally. I should have yeah. probably knocked before I came in, though. Sorry about that. So I don't know if she was actually in the summary I watched for... ...or the Crossbell games, and I just forgot. So, now that we're understood, what do you want? Have you come to tell me that you'll be fighting on our side after all? Can you no. not jump to conclusions? Besides, it's not like you're working with yeah, the Alliance because you're good you agree at. with what they're doing. Oh, naturally. Lady Clotilde seems to have a purpose of her own, but for my part, I have no obligation to help the Alliance whatsoever. I'm simply cooperating because I was told doing so was necessary to the plan. Plan? I'm not sure what she's getting at. Just so we're clear, that lord you keep mentioning isn't Vita Clotilde, is it? No, that's a no. different Anguish. She may be an Anguish like her, but my lord is the Seventh, not the Second. 
She is the leader of the Stallrider, the great light which guides us. Gallant yet beautiful, proud yet merciful. Her helmet is the most, most powerful helmet in the world. She's the strongest knight of all, and oh, she's simply divine. But she isn't a divine blade, at least as far as I'm aware. Well, you've made it clear how great you think she is. So the head of the Stallrider is also a woman? She certainly is. And if you must know, a hundred swordsmen of your strength couldn't hope to equal her. I won't doubt no, it. A thousand, even ten thousand of you wouldn't be able to so much as scratch her. What about a hundred thousand? She's strong. Still. If she's a woman who could be described as the strongest knight of all, Laura already noticed the similarity between the Eisenritter and Stallritter, but she really does sound like Saint Sandlot. And judging from that flashback, looks like Saint Sandlot <laughs> I see, as well. I you thinking. Incidentally, I may have already mentioned her title, but one can never share my lord's So um, yeah, too I've been times. actually a bit hesitant about it, but the story summary. I saw uh, might have spoiled something from on the Cold Steel games, but Steel Maiden, huh? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's actually a spoiler for the Cold Steel games, but I mean, even if it's not, it's clear that. If you didn't come to tell me that you'll be fighting on our side, I mean, it's clear that that Aryan Road is so powerful because she is immortal. Clearly. We shouldn't be standing here being friendly with one another. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Sorry for bothering you. Actually, there was one more thing I wanted to ask. You're not an enforcer like Blue Blanc or Sharon, right? Is there any or reason for that? Him too. Had to ask. Enforcers are selected by the society's leader, the Grand Master. And in order to be selected as one and given a number, that person needs to be burdened by some kind of darkness. Yeah. Uh, but just again, so I clear, wonder what Sharon's no darkness. There is no correlation between having a number is. and one's strength. All right? I'm quite strong. I didn't say you weren't, but it makes perfect sense. You don't strike me as someone who's carrying any kind of darkness with you. Huh. You're refreshingly sincere, like someone who hates anything that strays from the path of righteousness. That's not always right, though. I'll thank you not to spout such nauseating drivel in my presence. Oh dear, you've gone full sooner, eh, haven't you? Now get the hell out of my room! You were surprisingly quiet for screaming in large font. She chased me out. Huh. <laughs> I'm really curious about the Steel Maiden. Could she really have yeah. some connection with the Lance Maiden? I wouldn't doubt it. Perhaps even with the woman who helped us during our August field study. Yeah, now that I look at back at that. Surprised she didn't do that with her helmet on. Side. Let's knock against my right. better judgment. It's open. Come on in. That sounds like. Excuse okay. Me. Oh, it's you. You finished talking yep. with C? His name's Crow, not C, and he's never going to be anything else for me. <laughs> That's oh, I what know you his say. Name, but to us, he's always gonna be C. That's, That's perfectly understandable, you man. You might be young, 
but each and every one of us look up to him and respect him. Anyway, take a seat. Got a whole lot of questions, I bet. Does you asking that mean you're willing to answer them? <laughs> Depends on the questions. Just out of curiosity, how many members does the Imperial Liberation Front have left? I know the explosion back hmm. in the mine was staged, obviously. Sure was. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. Anyway, uh, ten, give or take? That's... We lost most of our members as soon as the war wow. started kicking into gear. Well, I guess you have oh. my condolences. Is that because the group's primary objective had been fulfilled? Basically, yeah. We all came from huh. different backgrounds. But the one thing we had in common was that we hated that bastard's guts. So after so he a few of you him, just decide to stick guys together really after any reason for sticking around. Can't say I blame him for calling it quits. Yeah. Crow Perfectly said that understandable. Seeing this war through to its end was the last part of his game. Are the members who haven't left sticking around for similar reasons? <laughs> Interesting question. Yeah. Can't speak for the others, but me? I don't really care how this war goes. I mean, I'm a former Jaeger who can hold his own in a fight. I've always lived for war. And teaching those dumbasses in the provincial armies how to pilot soldats is a job worth doing. Even if it's a pain. Huh, if we disband, so I'll find angle. myself something else to do. I see. Yep. I can't defend the assassination of the Chancellor or what you did near Trista. But I'd be happy if you chose to disband at least. <laughs> You're a funny kid. Being oddly nice to us after I've all the heard shit that before. Caused, don't you think? The cycle of hatred's gone on for long enough. The crimes you've committed will never vanish, but no one wants this war to go on longer than it has to. It's not as though you guys want war, do you? <laughs> That's enough of the niceties. If you've got time to worry about us, you just have to worry about yourself. Whether you choose to side Very with well the Alliance then. or go against them, you've got a tough road ahead, whether you like it or not. <sighs> yeah. Make sure to think long and hard before Let's you decide. Let's take that road! And if we end up as enemies again, show me what you got.